Hi guys, welcome to learntocreategames.com. Today we will look at a platformer using the 2D features. So let's get started. So first here I've got a sample project that has been uh, just created. You can see a camera there and a directional light. You can also see that the mode can be switched from 2D to 3D. So for today we're going to use a 2D mode. Next we will import new assets. So again there is a package that exists by default that's called 2D. Whenever you import this package, it will import a series of assets that will can be used uh, for your 2D platformer. Now I have already imported this asset, so again I get this message. And whenever you import this asset, it should create a new folder within the standard assets folder called 2D. So if you look at it, you could see several prefab and script. And for now, we will look at the prefab called character robot boy. So again, this is a character that is ready to go. You can use it uh, to move around, jump, and create a very simple platformer. So when this is done, you can use uh, one of those platforms, as prefabs again, if you drag and drop them. It will just create a simple platform. What I will do is just to resize it on the x-axis. So again, resize it along the x-axis. Done. So again, this character has everything you need. It's animated, and it also has a rigid body. So if I play the scene and I use the arrow keys on my keyboard, I should be able to go left, right, and jump as well. The only issue is that at the moment my camera, as you can see in the game window, is not following my character. Thankfully, there is a script included in a 2D asset called Camera 2D Follow. So this camera, if it's linked to a specific camera in the scene, will follow a specific target. So in my case, I'm just going to click on uh, main camera once the script has been added and specify also what target should be followed by this camera. So on the right hand side, you can see a, an attribute or a property called target. And I just need to drag and drop the character onto this placeholder, which means that the camera will now follow my character. So if you play the scene again, you should see that the camera will eventually follow the character. With a small bit of delay, but you can always modify that in the script settings. So again, if I jump, same thing, the camera will follow the character. So when this is done, you can do a lot of different things, and even very simply. So again, one of them could be to duplicate the platform that we have created earlier on. So again, we can take this platform and press Apple D or Control D to duplicate it and create several platforms around our character. So again here, I'm creating a, a platform on the left hand side, another one on the right hand side. And again, we're going to test the game, just to see if it's working. So uh, in my case here, we'll actually extend some of, some of my platforms here, just to create a longer path. And again, you can do that very easily by um, using Ctrl D if you're using a Windows machine or Apple D using a Mac and then you can use this, any of the shortcuts to be able to modify the scale of your object. So again, the keys are QWERT okay, and uh, they are respectively to pan the view, to move your object, to rotate it and to scale it as well. So in my case it works perfectly. I can move around, jump and again I can jump onto these platforms. So this is very fine, we have a, the start of a platformer. Right now what we could do is add a few objects to be collected by the player. So what we will do is move to my platformer uh, folder and drag and drop a, a picture that I've created earlier on. So it's called Green Dot. As you import this picture, so as you drag and drop this picture um, in Unity, if you click on it, you should see its properties. And by default it's going to be a texture. So again, we're going to change that to Sprite, because it's going to be a Sprite, otherwise we won't be able to use it for a game. So again, it's going to be a Sprite, and once you've chosen this property, just click on Apply. So it will make it a Sprite. So once this is done, I can drag and drop my Sprite. So again, I can drag and drop it onto the scene. It will be visible very easily. So again, take this object and drag and drop it on the scene. So again, night has become a texture 2D. So when this is done, there are a few things I can do, but right now I'm going to just zoom in on this object and also um, just move it slightly. So when this is done, I can play my scene. And again, as I play my scene, 
I will should be able to see this object, however, I will not be able to collide with it. And as we will see later, it is because I don't have a collider on it. So again, if I move my object around, I can, I'll be able to jump. There is also a layer property uh, by, by default on this object, so that you know whether they should appear in front of the player or behind the player. That's the order in the layer that you can see in the, um, in the top, um, I suppose, area of the window. Now, if you select this object and add a circle collider, you should be able to collide with it right now. So again, this circle collider will follow the shape of this object, which is circular. So here again, if I collide with this object, I can actually jump on it. and The collision is being detected, and this is because I've added a collider to it. So again, this is working pretty well at the moment. And one of the other things we could do is try to um, remove this object whenever we collide with it. Okay, so again, I don't think I'm going to go uh, using rigid bodies right now. We're going to do that later on. So again, that's something for later. So again, what we could do is make sure that whenever we collide with this object, we can pick it up. And the way it works is we're going to detect the collision. And whenever the collision has been detected between our character and the different object, we'll check for its name. So again, in our case, we're going to create a brand new script, a C-sharp script, and we will call it uh, Detect Collision. So this script will be linked to our character later on. So once this is done, just double-click on this script, and we can edit it. So by default, as you can see, it's uh, mono behavior, so it extends the mono behavior behavior. We have a start and an update function. So what we will do is create a new function, a built-in function, so a function that is, should be recognized by Unity, and that should be called whenever there is a collision between the object linked to the script and a different object with a collider. So in our case, it's going to be on collision enter 2D. And the parameter should be a collision 2D. Now again, there's a small mistake here, but it should be um, a collider 2D. So again, we're going to change that later. And again, this parameter here, whenever the collision occurs, will be uh, referred as C. So what I will want to do is to make sure that I print the name of the object I'm colliding with. So in this case, it's going to be print C dot uh, collider dot name. Now, as I do that, you will see a few errors in the console window. So again, uh, we need to modify my script. So again, whenever I'm going to drag this script onto the character, uh, we should have errors in the console window. And I will need to modify my script as well. I won't be able to run it. So here I'm just going to go back to my script and make the modification. So again, uh, there was a small mistake here. It should be collision 2D. So again, C uppercase and the rest lowercase 2D. And um, again, in this case, I'm going to check the collider of the object involved in the collision. It's going to be C.collider.name. So small little change here. Save your script. Go back to Unity. And now we should be pretty much OK to go. Clear the error. And if I play my scene again, you should see that uh, whenever I collide with anything, in fact, at, from the very start, you should have a message in the window. Okay, so again, the window should say that you are colliding with, with something. And again, if you collide with this object, the 2D object, it should be written as well, collided with green dot. So for the time being, we are pretty much OK to go. The only thing we need to do is just to make sure that if we're colliding with this green dot, then we will destroy it. So again, open collision. I'm going to check the name of the com object linked to collider involved in the collision, and I will destroy it. Now, there's a small typo again here. Uh, green should be spelled G-R-E-E-N. So again, if I um, finish this slide and save it, actually, it's it's good that it's there, this, this little typo, because those are actually just common errors that you might make. And uh, again, it will actually just uh, show you that uh, those occur, and you can just be, you can change them very quickly. So I'm going to go back to that later. 
Uh, before that, I'm going to create a score, so it's an integer, and the score will vary from 0 to 1, 2, 3, and 4. I will initialize the score in the start function, so initialize it to 0, and then whenever I pick up a green dot, I will increase the score by 1. I will also print the score, the value of the score in the console window as well. So again, print score, and then add or concatenate the string score equal with the actual value of the score. So again, if I play my scene and I try to jump around the scene, you should see that it will not pick up the object. And this is because the green is actually misspelled. Okay, so if I uh, play the scene, but before that, I will actually duplicate this object okay, so that I can pick up at least two or three different objects. I will also uh, change their name. So again, that's three of them. I'm using Ctrl D or Apple D on the Macintosh machine. Uh, Apple plus Enter or Ctrl and Enter on whenever this object is selected in the scene. We can actually then uh, change its name. And once this is done, we can play the scene. As you will see, if I want to jump onto these objects, uh, it just won't work because the, the, the spelling is actually incorrect. Okay, so again, if I try to jump on those, it just won't work. So again, I'm going to go back to my code, change to green, save my code, and play my scene again. And now we should be okay. So again, playing the scene should make sure that whenever this object on my player collide with this object, we should have, um, we should destroy the other object and increase the score. So again, in my case here, if you look at the bottom of the window, score is increased and the object just disappears. And that's it. So that's it guys. I hope you really enjoyed this tutorial. Again, if you want to know more about Unity, please check the website www.unity.com learn to create games.com see you bye